lovely colouring friends. My name is Amanda and this is my channel Amanda Colours. Today I am doing part four of my basic colour theory series and we are going to be talking about how we can use all the colour theory that we have learnt um, in this series when we are colouring. If you have missed out on any of the previous videos then I will link the playlist up in the iCards so that you can check those out. But before we get into that let's do a quick recap of what we covered in part three. In part three we spoke about colour temperature and neutral colours. So as we look at the colour wheel here we can remember that if we draw a line vertically down the colour wheel we have our cool colours on the left and our warm colours on the right. So our basic cool colours are blue, purple and green. They are colours that have more blue in them and they give a feeling of coolness and freshness. And our basic warm colours are red, orange and yellow. They are colours that have more red or yellow in them and they give a feeling of warmth and vitality. After we spoke about our basic colour um, temperature, we discussed how all colours can be cool or warm depending on how much um, yellow, blue or red are in them. For example, you can have a cool red that has a little bit of blue in it. Then we spoke about neutral colours and discussed that some of the more common neutral colours are black and white, beige, taup, creams and those kinds of colours. They are sometimes not even considered colours but they are colours and they do have um, undertones of different temperatures to them um, depending on what colours they are. For example, we can have warm and cool greys, we can have warm and cool beiges. So a cool beige will have a bit more blue in it and a warm beige will have more yellow in it. And understanding the undertones of our neutral colours is really helpful when we're putting together colour palettes and colour combinations for when we're colouring our pages. So in part four, I will be talking about how to use colour theory when colouring. So basically, how do we bring everything that we've learned about colour theory together and actually use it on our page? Basically, what we will be doing is creating colour palettes. A very simple way to create colour palettes is um, by using warm colours or cool colours without um, mixing them. So only warm colours or only cool colours will give you an automatic colour palette that is pretty basic but can still be interesting. And you can add more interest by using tints and shades. So that is darker versions and lighter versions of your colours. When we're talking about very basic colour palettes, we're talking about analogous colours. And they are colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. So that is what is going to give us um, a warm palette or a cool palette in very basic terms. It is a bit more complicated than that, but basically we were just creating analogous palettes. But if you really want your colour palettes to pop, you can add um, a complementary colour. So if we go back to thinking about our colour wheel, complementary colours are opposite each other on the colour wheel and that really brings the rest of the colours in our palette to life. So you can see here in the top example that most of the palette is blue based, so they're cool colours. So we've got two kinds of green and a grey blue. But to really bring it to life, we add in a couple of red tones, red hues, sorry, and it just really brings some vibrance and some life to the palette because they're opposite each other on the colour wheel. And in the bottom example here, we have some cool, um, some cool pinks and purples um, and also a green so they're mostly cool colours and we've got that um, tangerine orange there that just really lifts the whole palette and makes it feel more happy and bright 
rather than more calm and subdued. Here are some more examples of complementary color palettes. So the first one we have three greens and then we're bringing those to life with a couple of pinks. Um, and the next one is blues. So we have a variety of blues and then we're bringing that to life with a couple of oranges. And likewise, the bottom example are some purples and we're bringing that to life with the opposite or complementary color on the color wheel, which is yellow. And another way to create color palettes is by, sorry, is by using triadic colors. So they are colors that form a triangle across the color wheel or are evenly spaced around the color wheel. So you can see here I've created a palette using the basic colors of red, yellow, and blue, purple, orange, and green. And then a twist on that is like a peachy color, um, a blue violet and a yellow green. So this is going to give you a vibrant palette that um, that has a lot of life. So it's not it's going to be a varied palette rather than a series of colors that are similar with one or two that are a bit different to add that pop. Sometimes you need something a little more in your color palette or sometimes a palette is too bright or too vibrant and you need to tone it down a little bit. A great way to do this is to add neutrals into your palette. So here you can see I've taken some of the palettes I created before um, and I've added some neutrals. So for the first one I've added a warm grey and that just kind of helps bring down um, the boldness of the colors. Sometimes it can be a bit too much if your whole page is bright colors. Um, and the same for the second two. Um, I've just added in some neutrals that work well uh, in order to sort of round out the palette a bit more. Something that is super important to consider when you're creating your palettes and when you're actually applying that color to the page is the proportion or the ratio in which you're using those colors. For example, in the first column here, you can see I have the three colors all in even amounts. When you do that on a page, it can look great, but sometimes it, it just kind of, everything blends in together. Nothing really stands out because there's the same amount of all the colors. Whereas in the second example, in the middle there, I've added a bit more of the lighter pink and a bit less of the yellow. So this would give us more of a focus on the, um, on the yellow, actually, because the two other colors, there are more of them, so your eye will be drawn to the yellow. However, in the final example, um, we have mostly the darker pink. Um, and that would lay a real foundation for our page. Um, the yellow would still be very noticeable and um, be like a highlight on the page, but having little touches here and there of the light pink will also just give um, variation and interest for the eye to travel around the page. So some examples of that are here. So. This is where colors are used fairly evenly um, in proportion and also a lot of colors have been used. I don't know if you noticed, but your eye kind of doesn't really know where to rest on the picture. Um, it looks really busy, it's very bright and colorful, but sometimes it feels like it lacks a bit of sophistication um, and it just kind of just feels really busy for your eye. Whereas these two examples feel much more resolved and your eye has space to rest. Um, it still moves around the page because the colors are distributed throughout the page well, but there are definitely dominant colors. So in that first one, there's a lot of that mid-tone purple, but just pops of pink, which make your eye bounce backwards and forwards across the page. 
And this second example uses neutrals really well. Um, it's got some really light beiges and whites throughout the whole piece. So even though there's mostly that mustardy yellow, your eye still has places to bounce around and take in the content of the page without it being too busy or overwhelming. And these two examples use a lot of blues and cool colours, um, but the first one there has pops of pink and white in various places to help your eye focus on different details. And the second one incorporates a lot of neutrals and browns and natural colours to help um, create the mood of the piece um, and also give it balance. So where can you find colour palette examples and inspiration? Honestly, anywhere. The world around us is full of colours and if you are attracted to something, take note, take a photo um, and take a moment to think about why you're really liking those colours together and what it is that is drawing you to them. You can also check out this website, coolers.co, excuse my dog's ball there, um, and it is a great tool for building colour palettes and saving colour palettes. It can generate them randomly for you, um, and there's just lots of fun tools there to play with. Of course, Instagram is a great place to get inspiration. I actually save pictures that um, I'm attracted to the colours of, in a folder that I call color palettes um, so they're all there within Instagram if I ever want to look for some color inspiration. Of course we also have the amazing resource that Sarah Renee Clark has put together for us in form of the color cubes and the color companions. Um, you can check those out on her website. Um, they're a great resource for color palettes. And there's also Pinterest. Pinterest has a lot of um, color palette inspiration. You can simply search color palettes and thousands of results will come up for you. Um, so I have put together a couple of worksheets here that you can use to play around with color palettes and color ratio. You can download those through the link in the description or from my website amandacolors.com. I really hope that you have found this series helpful. Um, I have really enjoyed putting it together for you all. Um, and as always, please make sure um, you ask any questions that you have in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer those for you. And also let me know if you would be interested in me doing a video about color psychology and how color actually um, impacts our mood and can give us different feelings um, depending on the colors we use because I'm happy to do that as well. So again, thank you for watching this series. I hope it's been helpful. Please give the videos a thumbs up if you liked them and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, but thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.